This is the third lesson of level one on Honeysuckle Rose and Scrapple from the Apple. In the previous lessons I've been focusing on the harmony and also the scales that fit the sequence. I'm now going to talk about the middle eight of Scrapple from the Apple, which is slightly different to Honeysuckle Rose. I'm also going to talk about um, some ideas of arpeggios and chord tones. So in the previous lesson I focused on the Scrapple changes which was uh, on uh, F7 to B flat 7, G7 to C7. In Scrapple from the Apple we have almost the same idea but they're all a fifth apart from each other and it starts on A7. I'm actually playing the 13th there, it sounds a bit more sophisticated, but essentially it's a dominant 7. Then we go to D7, and then G7, and then C7. So again, all of these you can apply the Mixolydian scale. So that's a major scale of the flat 7. So I didn't really talk about it in detail or at all in the last lesson in Scrapple, but you can see it's just exactly the same process. And I also talked about pentatonic scales, which would work over that. The, the idea of chord tones is a, another way of looking at improvising. So if we take the, the chord tones of G minor, that would be G, B flat, D and F, and then the chord tones of C7, which would be C, E, G, B flat, is it important to bring out the chord tones in your improvisation? I would say definitely yes, because if you're improvising in a key like F and thinking, oh, I'm an F, I'll play lots of things to do with F, you're not really thinking about the harmony of G minor. Now, G minor is in, in F major, but the strong notes are G, B flat, D, and F, whereas in F, the strong notes are F, A, and C. So it is important to do that. You can just give yourself some um, exercises saying I'm only going to improvise on chord tones for the A section, so I'll just demonstrate that. Uh, it won't sound like um, a really sophisticated solo, but it gives you the idea. Okay. the uh, one bar per chord of Scrapple from the Apple Changes. Um, it might be a little bit tricky to do it with Honeysuckle Rose, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, I'll play it a little bit slower, that might help. Always play things more slowly if you're struggling at the, the, the correct speed. And you can see that, that that sounded pretty convincing, but obviously, you know, just playing the chord tones isn't um, the only way to improvise, but it does help. When we get to the end of the sequence, from bar five, I mentioned perhaps going to a chord six and raising the third. So if you were outlining that, it would be... So it would sound like this if you did an improvisation. And again, it was quite a simple improvisation, but I was mostly focusing in on the chord tones. The middle section is of both the tunes are dominant sevenths. So again, you could focus on the important notes. So in Honeysuckle Rose, that's for F7, F, A, C, E flat. B flat D F A flat for B flat seven, then G B flat D F and then C E G B flat and an improvisation on just chord tones could sound like this. put an extra note in. In Honeysuckle Rose we've just got um, two 
chords and then we move down a minor third but in Scrapple from the Apple they all move down in fifths but again you can do the same thing so for A7 A, C sharp, E, G, D, F sharp, A, C, G, B, D, F, C, E, G, B flat and again they're on the PDF if I'm going too fast you can just have, have a look and uh, you can see the notes in C concert or if you're in a, a different key if you're a trumpeter or a saxophonist or something, you can see the, the key in the PDF for your specific instrument. I'll just improvise on those chords, just using chord tones. This is the Scrapple from the Apple, middle eight. <laughs> feels like an exercise so it's it, it's it's a way to really learn the changes but it's not the end result it's just a, a process for practice and that's the end of lesson three level one of honeysuckle rose and scrapple from the apple do join me for level two